Juliet Naked is the story of obsession. Um, a man's obsession with an artist from his younger days. Um, his lack of obsession with his partner. Um, and her eventual boredom at his behaviour and moving on. I'd read some of Nick's book before, and, but um, Barry Mandel, the producer, sent me an email, um, which I read while I was making like a sci-fi movie. And I was very much drawn to it because it felt like it wasn't a sci-fi movie. <laughs> and um, then before I got the chance, I'd met, I'd worked with Jesse Peretz before, who directed uh, the movie on, on some episodes of Girls. Um, and really liked him, so that was great. And I'd worked with Barry Mandel before on some Judd Apatow films, and uh, we'd always got on. And so I read the book straight away before I read the script, because I feel like it's a kind of an easier way into those things to feel like if there is a story to be told. And really enjoyed it, and and that's that's and it went from there. There is a familiarity in, in the male characters he writes that I can understand. And to be honest, this was the first script I had read where I felt like it's a little bit, I did a, used to do a show called The IT Crowd, and it kind, the character reminded me a little bit of that, in that he's, you can imagine him down in the basement kind of obsessing over something or other. Um, I think for the IT Crowd character, it was like guided by voices and bands like that. <clears throat> and for Duncan, my character in this, it's, it's obviously Tucker Crow. Duncan is definitely a, a culture nut, or would certainly consider himself one. And I'm probably that a little. I don't know if I'm, I get as obsessed about single issue things. And I've got friends around me, especially like comic book guys, who do get really, I was never a comic book guy growing up. And I find that people who were, even if they're not even still into comic books, whatever they really like, they really like if it's a band or a particular genre of films or whatever. Um, I don't know what the correlation is there, but it's, it's something that I've noticed. Um, but other than that, um, being a useless partner at times, I could understand, and if I didn't, I would be told daily about it. Nick did come to set. Nick, actually, I met him for the first time yesterday. And it was unfortunate. It's been, a, it's been a great shoot and it's been really easy and everybody gets on great and the material is really strong. And yesterday we were shooting a scene and we were doing it terribly. We were just doing a bad job. Like it was a tiny little scene which we decided wasn't really working so we made it a bigger scene but hadn't put enough thought into it. So I shot it without really writing it very well on the fly and it was a mess. So we stopped and said, okay, let's start the whole thing again. And then of course, everybody kind of starts coming in with more opinions and that's, um, that's a shit factory. And in the midst of those arguments and conversations, um, we heard somebody just go, hello. And, <laughs> terrible impression. And that was, uh, it was Nick. Um, and we're like, oh God, he's been watching a while. While we've been saying things like, this just doesn't make sense. <laughs> How do I make this feel real? And, he, and of course he was like, yeah, I didn't write that. You guys just made that crap up. Um, but it was cool because then we got to try and solve a kind of a big problem that we had created with the actual writer of the material. And he was really useful and um, 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 humble and really cool about it. So it actually turned out pretty well. Tucker Crow is um, the most expressive and yet inclusive, almost forgotten figure in alternative rock music um, of the late 80s and early 90s. Um, he really only had one album called Juliet, which many people, including my character, obsess over. 
And shortly after making that album, he became a recluse. And nobody knows why. Ethan's an artist, you know, more than he is an actor. And he's, uh, so, and, and I think that's the, the kind of, the perfect primary colour for somebody like Tucker, who we certainly all think of as an artist more than a performer. Um, and he's kind of shambolic and sexy, and he is somebody who we've kind of grown up with a little bit. Um, so he's, he, he was great casting for. When I heard that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. I want to see him be a rock star. Rose is primarily a terrific actor and funny. And, you know, I'd obviously had the opportunity to work with her a little bit before on, on, on Bridesmaids and, and remember her being really funny while we were promoting and, uh, she has a kind of an earnest quality that can also be quickly followed by a kind of a biting wit. Um, you feel for her, she kind of, you have a lot of empathy for her, um, but she's never really a doormat. So it's, she can be really solid and strong, like you see her in something like Damages or whatever, and then she can, she can make you laugh and she's, she's really talented. I hope it is at this stage is just a really good rom-com. I know that there is a kind of a, it's almost considered a curse word, the rom-com, which I've never really understood. I think that we've, we've made, as an industry, so many bad ones that somehow we've managed to ruin the genre, like as a term. But I think trying to make a good rom-com, one that feels honest and is funny and has moments of romance is, is, is a good idea. Um, so I, it's, I think the music will be great and we'll kind of elevate it from that. It feels like it's about something rather other than just boy meets girl. Um, but hopefully it will be a, a, a really good romantic comedy. He obviously feels incredibly comfortable in the company of strong female characters, um, as you say with all of those projects. So this is a movie that's essentially led by Rose's character. Um, and he's, he, he obviously used to be in the Lemonheads, so he's got um, some music pedigree and has a lot of connections to that and feels more Nobody has to tell him what the music is going to be like, you know, or it's not, he's, he's, he's the perfect director for a movie like this, where he's, he understands the kind of the movie or the, the music obsession part of it and the strong female finding her way in the world part of it.